welcome back to Atman Unlimited. We're just about ready to wrap up our machine alignment series. We're going to talk about ball screws. Now ball screws have a couple of things that need to be addressed with them. The one that everybody is most familiar with is something called backlash. And uh, backlash in the ball screw is basically the ability for the ball screw to move to a position, stop, and then come back and then stop exactly where it left. So if you have backlash in a ball screw and you start at zero and you move this way and stop and then come back and go to the exact same zero position, you won't end up where you started. Okay, that's backlash. When you go out and come back and you don't come back to where you once were. Now backlash tends to show up as ball screws start to wear and the preload starts to get looser. Uh, a lot of the machine controllers, including this older one, have backlash compensation. But you want to be careful with backlash compensation uh, because if you put too much backlash compensation in, uh, it just drives the controller a little batty uh, while you're trying to machine your parts. So if you have really bad ball screws that have, you know, thousands of an inch of backlash in them, uh, you probably want to replace them, fix them, get them rebuilt, get them reballed, uh, etc. There's a lot of remedies to that, um, but you don't want to compensate for that much backlash. The other thing with ball screws is there's an alignment to them. What you don't want to do is you don't want to have your ball screw, if your ball screw is uh, supported at both ends, you don't want to have it bending. Okay, that can do really weird and bad things to a ball screw. So you want to make sure that it's running straight and true. So I'll, I'll show some techniques on, on how to do that and also some techniques on troubleshooting backlash to figure out where your backlash is located. It may not be in the ball screw itself. It may be uh, the mount of the ball screw or a coupler or any number of, of uh, legs in the system that could be causing your backlash. So don't don't jump to conclusions and say, oh, I need a new ball screw just because there's a little bit of backlash in it. So let's go over to the machine. We'll uh, we'll measure some backlash. I'll show you how to measure backlash, and then I'll I'll show you some of the alignment and backlash troubleshooting techniques. All right. So we're going to measure machine backlash here in the x axes. Uh, this technique is the same for every axis. Uh, it's a pretty simple technique. I don't have the GoPro set up so you can see the dial indicator. Uh, I wanted you to be able to see the setup very well here. Um, so what we're going to do is we just have a, a gauge block and we're going to slide that gauge block up against our dial indicator and we're just going to slide it up just a little bit so that we get a reading. Okay. And now what we're going to do, um, I'm just going to jog the machine for this test but you really want to write a program. And what you want that program to do is you want that program to come out and move out an inch or two and then come back to the exact same spot and then you want to put a, a, a hard stop in it. Then you want to re-zero your indicator. Then you want your program to lift the Z up a little bit, go this way the same distance, and then come back and then push the Z back down. Okay, by doing that, We've moved this way, and then we come back, and then we're going to see what the difference is in our indicator. Okay? So I am just going to uh, jog the machine a little bit. So I'm going to move uh, X plus, and I'll move a couple inches. Okay? Now I'm going to move back, and I'm going to move back to X zero. That's where I started. And when you move back, um, the reason why you want to write a program is you want to be very careful that you don't overshoot. Because if you overshoot, uh, the test is pointless and spoiled. So I'm just sneaking up on it here. Okay, so there's we're back at zero. So now I'm going to zero my indicator. Okay, so now my indicator is zero. So now I'm just going to bring Z up enough so that the indicator is above our block. And then I'm going to move X 
the other way. And you, you want to move an inch or two, let everything settle out. Okay, and now we'll come back. And again, it's better to write a program to do this. I'm just showing you the movements here. Okay, we're back at zero. Now we're just going to bring our Z head down. Now this is why you just want to kiss that block just a little bit, and it's good to have a block that has a chamfer on it, so when that indicator comes down, it will just ride down onto the surface of the block, and you're not going to break your indicator. Okay, so now we're back on our block, and we're indicating. So now we can take a measurement, and we're exactly back at zero. Uh, so the, our x-axis in this machine, I know, has about five ten-thousandths of an inch of backlash, and we put five ten-thousandths of an inch of backlash comp in the controller, and we end up with uh, zero backlash. Now, when I got the machine, that wasn't the case. I had backlash in the screw to the tune of about a thousandths and a half, so that's a fair amount of backlash. Um, I was able to troubleshoot the backlash, and in this case, it was not the ball screw, which was good. It was easy to fix. So don't necessarily jump to conclusions and think that it's a ball screw. So let's go through some of the backlash um, culprits here. So everybody automatically thinks ball screw. So yes, the ball nut to the ball screw could cause backlash. The next piece in the chain that can cause backlash is that that ball screw is anchored to the saddle somewhere. And it's normally anchored with a set of thrust bearings. Let me zoom out for you. So out here somewhere, is, there's a thrust bearing, and that's where that ball screw is anchored. So if the thrust bearing is wore out and the whole ball screw is chucking back and forth, that could cause backlash. Ball screw is just fine, but the thrust bearings are worn out. Then there's another source of backlash, and that is in the coupler between the servo drive motor and the ball screw itself. If that coupler is wore out, um, you could have some backlash there. So how can we diagnose and find out uh, where our backlash is? So let's take a look at that. Okay, so I have my first test set up, and this setup can be used to try to figure out if you have backlash in the ball nut of the ball screw itself. And what we have is we have a simple test indicator and we've got the ball of the test indicator just gently touching um, the flanks of one of the threads on the ball screw. Now what's going to happen is as we turn that ball screw and the table moves because we have our mount on the table, our test indicator is always going to stay in reference uh, to that position of that ball screw flank. Okay, so the table and the indicator are moving together with the rotation of the screw. Now if we go forwards a little bit and then go backwards a little bit, we should see our test indicator stay stable. If you see the test indicator jumping, that is indicative of the table is moving relative to the ball screw. So that would be um, backlash in the ball nut relative to the ball screw. So this is the first test that you can do to see if you've got backlash in your ball screw. Now also, while I've got this test set up, if you put the indicator on the crest of the thread in this axis and then 90 degrees, that is how you can test to see if your ball screw is running true. So we can put it on the crest of the thread and then run the axes of the table in and out and then move it to the other side and run it in and out. And if your ball screw is running nice and true and straight, let me zoom out, if your ball screw is running nice and true and straight, that test indicator is not going to move. Just like some of our other alignment tests, it's taking a, a reference um, of our rails and comparing it with our ball screw. So again, we want to do this after the machine's all aligned, 
and then we can align our ball screws that way. So this is a good technique for both checking if there's backlash in the ball nut and for checking to make sure that our ball screw is running straight and we're not bending or torquing or, or loading up our ball screw at all. The next thing that we can check for backlash is the thrust bearings like we talked about. So this is the next test setup, and what this will test is this will test to see if we have any uh, backlash in the thrust bearings that anchor the ball screw to the saddle. So what we want to do is we want to take our indicator and anchor our indicator to the saddle, somewhere on the saddle, and then we want to take the tip of our test indicator and put it on the end of the ball screw and it can be either end the thrust bearing end or this end as long as you have a flat spot uh, to put your indicator on. You want to put a mark uh, on the ball screw just a little touch of sharpie and do you know a few ro rotations one way and then stop at that mark take a measurement and do a few rotations the opposite way and then stop at that mark and take another measurement. So then this will tell you if you have uh, chucking of the entire ball screw in the system due to wore out thrust washers. So that's the, the second method uh, for checking. So the last place that we could have some backlash in the Fidel machines is this coupler. Uh, Fidel uses a three piece coupler system on, on their older machines that has a nylon insert. If that nylon insert gets worn, uh, what can happen is you'll have a little bit of slop between the ball screw and the coupler and that can generate some backlash. Uh, easiest solution for that is just to replace that nylon bushing between the two pieces and you should restore uh, your, your rigidity there. So you can see as I jog uh, X, uh, that rotates. So if we have some slop between the two of them, that will show up as backlash because uh, with this machine, our positional control is based on a resolver that's inside the motor. So we're, con we're not controlling the position of the table or the ball screw per se. We're controlling the rotational position of the motor and then it is inferred that that's coupled to the ball screw and the table and thus the table moves. So if we have any slop in that coupler, that will show up as backlash as well. So those are, those are the three main sources of, of backlash. Uh, again, we can measure all three sources pretty easily and we can also measure to make sure our ball screw is running true and isn't getting uh, twisted, torqued, or canted. Okay, if you find your ball screw is not running true, uh, if you look move the camera a little bit, if you look here at these screws there is adjustment slots in there uh, where you can move uh, the motor connection around on the Fidels to true up your ball screw so your ball screw runs nice and true. It's important that it runs true uh, for your ball screw pitch to be consistent through the travel. So with a simple uh, test indicator and an indicator holder, we can uh, quickly and easily diagnose any ball screw backlash issues uh, and identify where they are so that we can make the appropriate repairs the first time. Uh, don't automatically assume that your ball screw is bad. It may just be the thrust washers uh, that uh, tie the ball screw uh, to the saddle or the, the table. Uh, also, keep in mind that if you anchor your uh, test indicator to the moving surface, you can then put that test indicator on the ball screw itself and it will maintain its reference point because it's going to move with the table and it will move at the exact same pitch that the ball screw is turning at. So by using that method uh, we can test for the ball nut backlash and then we can also test for run out and trueness of the rotation of the ball screw as the axis moves through its travel. So this brings us to the final episode of machine alignment and calibration. It's been a long road um, thank you for watching if you've watched all these episodes. The last episode is going to be on uh, positional calibration of your ball screw. 
So we look forward to seeing you again on the last one, and uh, thanks for watching all the previous ones.